Hi, this is Joachim for statisticsglobe.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to find missing values in a vector in the R programming language. So in the video I'm going to show you an example and this example relies on the example data that we can create with line 3 of the code. So if you run this line of code you will see that a new vector object appears at the top right of RStudio and we can also have a look at this vector object by running line 4 of the code. And then you can see that at the bottom in the RStudio console, our vector is returned. And as you can see, our vector is a numeric vector. And this vector also contains some NA values. Now, there are basically two important functions in the R programming language if you want to inspect the missing values of your data. And the first function is the isNA function that I'm showing you here in line 7 of the code. So within the isNA function, we simply need to specify the name of our vector. So in this case, our vector is called expl_vec1. So if you run this line of code, you will see that the RStudio console returns a logical vector um, containing the values false and true. And these logical values indicate whether an element of your vector is an A or is not an A. So in case an, a vector element is not an A, the is an A function is returning false, as you can see here in the first three positions. But if a vector element is an A, then the is an A function is returning the value true, as you can see here in the middle and at the end of the logical vector. Now, we can use these logical values to identify the positions of the NA values in our vector. And this is done by combining the isNA function with the which function, as you can see here in line 10 of the code. So here we are simply wrapping the which function around the code that we have already used before. And if you run this line of code, you will see that at the bottom in the RStudio console, the two values 4 and 7 are returned. And these values are returned because our NA values are at the fourth position and at the seventh position. So these two values are indicating at which positions of our data the NA values occur. Yeah, so in this example, I have shown you how to identify the positions of NA values in vectors. However, sometimes you might want to know the positions of NA values in a data matrix or in the variables of a data frame. And uh, this is something that I'm explaining in a tutorial that I have recently published on my homepage, statisticsglobe.com. So if you want to learn more on this topic, you could check out this tutorial on my homepage. I will put a link to the tutorial into the description of the video, so you could check it out there. And furthermore, if you have liked the video, I would be very happy if you leave me a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to get notifications in future when I'm releasing new R programming tutorials to the channel. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot. See you next time. Bye bye.